going to ask you this question and drop a comment below with an answer. Where did all the workers go? Did aliens show up, hit them with a laser beam, and like teleport them to some other planet? Does Elon Musk have them all locked in a plant somewhere manufacturing batteries and Teslas? Did they just get evaporated? Where'd they go? That's my question. Um, but I've been searching for economic stuff on YouTube. So, of course, the algorithm keeps serving me all this uh, economic type content. And I stumbled upon one last night. And, uh, you know, it's got some voiceover that sounds like the doom and gloom type of uh, old Wall Street barren kind of voice. And I'm listening to some of it for a minute. And then I, I left a comment. And I said, um, you know, there's three CVSs by me that are closed because of a worker shortage right now. I had a friend that was uh, frantically driving around trying to get some COVID tests because they had some people in his family that have COVID. So they wanted to hurry up and get some tests to figure out, you know, what they need to do. Hits three of them, all closed. Okay. Keeps driving, he finally finds somewhere. But now it's like, do you start to understand what happens when we don't go to work in the morning? And I've, I've talked about this quite often in the last like 60 days about if we don't get people back to work, then we're going to have some major issues because it starts to affect our healthcare system. It starts to affect our food supply chain. It starts to affect our fire and our police and many other services. And, um, as he's driving around, he, he got a little taste of it. Like, this isn't good. Like, what happens if I needed to get a prescription filled? You probably eventually find somewhere how far do you got to drive. And maybe he has that luxury of driving 45 minutes to get a prescription. But, you know, a lot of people don't. And it's one of those things that you're starting to see these cracks. And if we don't get them fixed, I talk about what happens when the ambulance workers don't show up. And you get T-boned out on the highway and there's no one there to come save you. What happens if they actually do pick you up in the ambulance and you get to the hospital, but they're so understaffed that they can't accept you? There's no nurses. There's no triage. There's no, no one there to save you. What is going to happen? What happens when we don't have enough food getting transported across the country? Well, then the grocery store shelves going, start going empty. And we know you live on acres of land with a bunch of wheat and corn in the backyard, right? No, you don't, because we don't live that way anymore. We are completely dependent upon someone to run the water plants, for water to come to our homes, for food to get to the grocery stores or the restaurants, or someone to cook and prepare that food, someone else for the healthcare system. Nearly everything that we need, we are dependent upon somebody else. And that's the issue right now. So in the midst of doing like, you know, looking for economic content to see what's going on and finding this doom and gloom, Wall Street barren voiced guy, I, uh, I drop a comment that, hey, you know, this is three CVSs are closed. You're seeing other businesses close. This is why we got to understand that we're very reliant on our neighbor going to work every day. And if someone makes the comment back that, um, People can't afford to work at CVS anymore. I'm like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll play along. I'm, I'm thinking, let's just say that they can't afford to work at CVS or they don't want to work at CVS. My question is, where are they working? Um, I own a handful of recruiting and executive search companies for two decades. I also run a fast growing, one of the largest fast growing career services comp companies in the country. I got a pretty good pulse on what's going on in the job market. And uh, everybody's hurting for people. So if they're not working at CVS and they went to work somewhere else, then where did they go? Because we're seeing gaps nearly at every level. Manufacturing, healthcare, industrial, tech, finance, it doesn't matter. Everywhere is hurting. So if everyone left these jobs to go do some other jobs, then hiring demand somewhere would be down but it's not and that's when you got to realize that people didn't leave the cvs jobs and, and the amazon warehouse jobs 
and the restaurant jobs, and they didn't all become coders at Facebook. It's they're not participating in the workforce right now. And we're starting to see a lot of these issues pop up where maybe you needed to get your medicine refilled at seven o'clock, but the CVS is closed. Um, these aren't like modern day conveniences. These are things that a lot of people need to live. So I saw something on Bloomberg this morning. They were talking about the uh, John Deere um, strike and they were offered $8,500 signing bonus, 10% raise and some other stuff. It sounded like pretty decent, but you know, with inflation going on, everything's questionable right now. But they mentioned the whole thought of, it seems like people are, are now focused more on leisure lifestyle now that they've gotten the taste of not having to go to work and people are more focused on travel and like enjoying life instead of working and that's compounding the issue and I go I'm gonna ask you this question <clears throat> here's a second comment you can leave um, <laughs> if you look at the savings charts there was like a 12 month period when it rocketed up there's two different savings charts I think the government tracks one is percentage of your income saved another one is just <clears throat> total savings. Those both rocketed up for 12 months and now they pretty much dipped down to where we were pre-COVID. Um, if you're not working and you're focusing on the leisure lifestyle, where are you getting the money to live? Does anyone got an answer to that one? I'm curious. I grew up without much money. Like I said, you know, my father worked in a steel factory. Um, we didn't have a lot of cash. We couldn't like just, my dad just couldn't sit around for 12 months and not work. We lose our part. We lost every. We were close to losing everything, and we were working jobs. Um, we couldn't sit around for twelve months and not work. So, are people sitting on that much cash from the fat unemployment and the stimulus and everything? Is that one of the answers? So, we know that just people not just particip- They're not participating in the workforce, um, and but somehow they're continuing to live. The only answer I possibly have is that if you're a dual income family that with the way things are right now if one person was able to get an extraordinary raise then the other person in the two household family income earners they don't have to work anymore at least right now and i think that's you know that's probably some but i don't know if it's a lot and that's the only thing i can come up with right now if someone was making 80 grand and they were able to get a huge bump and go to like 125 and you know now maybe the the other person in the family is able to stay home and take care of the the kids or you know work on a new business or a startup or, or something i don't know <clears throat> but i don't think that's where we lost you know five million workers um do you have an answer to that i'm curious i just want to keep focusing on that if we don't get people back to work our way of life is going to crumble um, when people stop picking up your trash, we're gonna live in we're gonna live in a gutter world. When uh, shelves start getting empty at the grocery store, there's gonna be panic. Um, Health care is gonna fall apart. What happens when people stop going to the water plant? Your water's not coming out where you can drink it. You want a boil advisory every day? What happens when they stop showing up to fix the roads? Hell, even when we were fully staffed, our roads sucked. Um, I actually had to write a letter to our county. <clears throat> I live on a dirt road. I've already busted one rim. It's been so bad this year. It's like someone came through with a whole fleet of fighter jets and like carpet bombed the roads. They're so bad. And I've lived on dirt roads for a long time. I'm used to it. But this isn't normal by any means. So like the neighborhood's getting kind of mad. Like this is bullshit. In the sense that you keep taking the taxes right but and you keep raising taxes and you take the tax money but the roads aren't getting fixed so i had to write the the you know county road commission and then you know more people you talk to and i got a buddy that moved up here from tampa and he lives kind of near me on a dirt road and he's like what is up with the roads and i'm like man there's so many people mad right now well then (laughs) i'm watching the local news and they're, they're running a news story on how the road commissions um they, they're, they're like 30% understaffed right now. 30%. Now that's going to trickle over to not just patching roads and grading dirt roads. They're now worried about the wintertime. Because we're not going to have enough plow drivers. 
And it's like, again, you start thinking about this. Now we don't have plow drivers, more accidents. People, The kids got to get to school. You got to get to work. Um, everything travels on roads for the most part. And uh, like I keep trying to, I'm trying not to paint a picture of doom and gloom. I don't want to be those people that sit, sits around all day and just talks doom and gloom. I'm just, I'm looking at things that if we don't get them fixed, life's going to, going to suck. It's like, we just spent 18 months dealing with the pandemic. Um, now we got like crazy high inflation, gas prices, worker shortages, like things are falling apart. Um, and I think they can spiral out of control really fast. One thing we can fix though, is getting people back to work somehow. So, but Hey, if you know where all the workers went, drop a comment below. Hell, drop a funny comment below. Drop something below. Tell me where they went. I'm, I'm curious. Well, I would like to know. But until then, I'm going to catch you on the next one.